most of us spend about 30 years of our lifetime sleeping. That's more than one third of our entire life. If we live up to 90, 90 year old, then um, that's one third of our lifespan. That's an incredible amount of time. And that is so important that we have good quality and good quantity of sleep. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, in, especially in the United States, there's a lot of, you know, the work and the lifestyle and give us a lot of stress. And 75% uh, of most of us actually have some sort of sleeping disorder. It ranged from maybe a, a couple of days of not able to sleep well to a chronic insomnia. So it is quite stunning. You know, in 2002, there was a really uh, important, very big uh, clinical research on our lifespan related to uh, our sleeping. And the result, after millions of studies, actually, your life can be shortened. Or, you know, the result is that 15% more likely you will have a shorter lifespan or premature death, like dying prematurely. If you have less than six hours sleep daily or sleeping too much, it's the same. If you sleep more than nine hours a day or less than six hours a day on a long-term basis, that's the result you have 15% more chance of living a much shorter life. So just keep that in mind, that how important it is. Um, just having not good quality sleep, you know, not just can affect our memory and our um, energy level and learning ability, but also it will affect our metabolism. You can gain weight because it affects a lot of our hormonal system including growth hormone. That's very important, like, you know, you, you want to have, um, really, for ladies, want to have beautiful skin, want to have, you know, uh, uh, all the, the good thing in life, you need, you need good growth hormone, and that only was secreted when you're in deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And also, um, not having a good sleep, you can have cardiovascular disorders such as high blood pressure, and also it will decrease your immune function. And also um, it will affect, you know, many, many other, many other things in your body system, so. Thank you for having me here today, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of uh, thoughts on ways that you can improve your sleep. I am a nutrition and wellness coach, I'm a natural food chef, and I'm a yoga teacher. Uh, so uh, sleep is totally underrated. Um, people don't think of it as, as a healthy aspect of a healthy lifestyle. They're just, okay, I have to sleep. But the, the more regular you can develop healthy sleep habits, the better you're going to feel. Um, so it's really, really important. So a lot of times when I uh, work with my clients, you know, they'll say, oh, I'm having trouble sleeping. So I spend some time trying to diagnose what they might be eating and how, what their lifestyle might be like. And then provide them with tips on things that they might be able to try to improve their sleep habits. So I'm going to go over some of the tips that um, I share with my clients. So obviously avoiding caffeine or coffee, it's stimulant. Anything that's going to stimulate you um, before you go to bed or even later in the afternoon. After 3 o'clock, I try to get my clients to stop with the sugar, stop with the caffeine uh, sodas, the candies and things like that so that your body can wind down when it gets ready for sleep. Another thing that um, my clients find quite surprising is when they're, they drink in the evening. After a busy day in the office, I'll have a cocktail, I'll have a glass of wine, but what actually ends up happening is as you begin to, the alcohol begins to metabolize in your system, it works as a stimulant and it can keep you up. So 
I say, let's cut out the alcohol, and all of a sudden they're finding them, themselves being able to sleep better. Another thing is try not to exercise before bedtime. Um, when I used to be in the corporate world, and I would go to the gym at 8 o'clock at night, and I'd work, from eight, work out from 8 to 9 o'clock at night, and then 11 o'clock would come around. I couldn't go to sleep. So you're best off exercising in the morning or in the afternoon rather than in the evening because it stimulates your body and you won't be ready for rest. Sleep only as much as needed. So a lot of my clients and friends will, oh, I catch up on my sleep on the weekends. So I'll hear my clients saying they sleep till 12 in the afternoon on Saturdays. That's not good for your body. Your body, it's best to have a regular sleep routine. You try to go to bed at the same time and get up at the same time. So when you try to catch up on the weekends, that's not really doing what you think it is for your body. Your body needs to sleep every day. So keeping a regular sleep schedule. Another thing that can keep you up is nicotine, so smoking. So if you have trouble sleeping because nicotine is a stimulant, try to cut back on smoking or eliminate smoking. And I think we all know that smoking really um, isn't good for us. We talked a little bit earlier about the bedroom environment. So one of the things I'll ask my clients is, what's your bedroom environment? It's not dark. Or, you know, they have the TV on in the bed. You really want to create the bedroom environment as a place of rest, a sanctuary for sleep. It's not the place to work. It's the place that you want to create for your body to rest. Naps and other poor lifestyle choices can affect your sleeping. So you don't want to, you know, take regular naps or get in the habit of that. Again, it's carving out a nice chunk of optimally eight hours of sleep, between seven and nine hours of sleep. Um, milk can also keep you up. So you you want to avoid, you know, some people are lactose intolerant and they don't know it. So look at the amount of dairy in your diet, and then they help you with your sleep. Carbohydrates, okay. Um, some people don't have enough carbohydrates in their diet, so they're on a you know low carb, raw protein, Atkins, whatever. Those foods comfort the body, and they prepare the body for sleep. So getting things like whole grains, brown rice, quinoa, a whole grain bread in your diet is really important and can help your body rest better. Another thing that can keep you up are over-the-counter weight loss products. So a lot of people are like, I want to lose five pounds this spring, the beach season's coming up, so they'll start taking an over-the-counter weight loss product. Those are stimulants, and they're going to keep you up at night. So it's better to do natural weight loss, healthy foods, exercise, that'll help with your sleep for weight loss. Um, and lastly, uh, there are a couple of natural supplements that you can take, as opposed to uh, prescription sleep medication or over-the-counter sleep medication and those would be melatonin and valerian and they work very well in terms of naturally getting the body in a sleep mode. So, so I can't say enough, a, a great pillow, a comfortable bedroom envi room environment, a healthy lifestyle that has sleep as a major component of it I can't say that um, how important it is. So again, sleep is underrated, and enjoy your sleep. <laughs> Thanks. before you're going to sleep, yeah. that may be triggering it as well. So it's trying to sleep on your stomach, mm -hmm. eating your dinner a little bit earlier, and checking with your doctor that there may be something in your sinuses or something going on with your nose that could be causing it. And um, does it keep you up or are you... Um, I wake up like, you know, three, four times. Okay. You know, so again, this kind of bother me. you want to make sure it's not sleep apnea. Which can, which is a condition that can cause you go into a very deep level of sleep. So you want to make sure you go to your doctor and diagnose that, and then the other suggestions and see what happens. So Ideally, you want your, you know, you want to have your neck uh, so that 
the, the pillow is right here within your neck, so that your head is flat on on the pillow, mm -hmm. and there isn't a you're going up like that. That could be a trigger as well. Okay, so I just sleep. Lower the pillows, yeah, the and or mm -hmm. even try without a pillow. Yeah. Without a pillow. <laughs> 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 Spine will be. Straight, right? Straight, so yeah. mm -hmm. um, that's why the buckwheat pillow is really good because it kind of forms into your curve. Oh. Right. So you can actually have you know, a lot of pillows are either too soft or too hard that it doesn't conform yes, into the shape. That's why it's so hard to adjust. Right. Yeah. My pillow is, yeah.